In this short video, I'm going to show you how to configure your development environment for use in developing applications for Macintosh and for iOS. I've got Rad Studio XZ6 installed, and I need to make sure that a few things are available on my Macintosh. First thing is I need to make sure I have the latest Xcode, uh, version 5.1, and that I have my devices connected. Uh, here I've got my iPhone and my iPad and then I've got provisioning profiles for doing development and debugging for each of those devices. I've also installed all the latest documentation and the latest updates for simulators and for Xcode, including the command line tools. As part of the install, we include the platform assistant server for Windows and for Macintosh. The PA server is needed for the Windows-based IDE to be able to communicate to the Macintosh and to the iOS devices. So we're going to take this package file and we're going to copy it over to my Macintosh. So over here on my Macintosh side, I've got the PA server package file for the Platform Assistant server for Mac. So we'll just double click on it and this will bring up the installer for PA server. We'll click through the license agreement and then click the install button. It'll ask me to log in since I'm going to install this in the application folder. And now the PA server is installed. We can go to our applications and double click on the PA server. We can specify a password so that only the IDs that I trust can connect to a Macintosh. Maybe you're using a shared Macintosh on a network. In this case, I won't use a password. The PA server wants to use the Developer Tools Access API for OS X. So I've got to use my password to allow it to take control. Then I hit the question mark for the available commands. The one I use most often is the letter I, which will give me the IP address for the PA server that's running over on my Macintosh. The next step is to go back to the IDE and under Tools, Options, Connection Profile Manager, this is where we can connect to PA servers out on remote computers. For example, my OS X notebook. We'll give it a name and the platform we want to connect to is OS X. And we need to give it the IP address or the machine name. I'll just use the IP address. I didn't put a password on the PA server, so I don't need to enter one. Click Test Connection, and the ID succeeded connecting. And now I have a connection profile that I can use. You can have any number of connection profiles, and they're saved in a subdirectory as part of the RAD Studio configuration. The next step in making sure I'm prepared for OS X and iOS development is to go under Tools, Options, SDK Manager, and I'll click the Add button, select the platform I want, which is OS X, for example. Here's the connection profile, and notice that it is queried over on my Macintosh to see what SDKs are installed. I had Mountain Lion and now I have Maverick, so we'll choose the latest version of Mac OS X. The SDK manager will go and it will read where all of the header files, where all of the interfaces, where all the libraries are on the Macintosh, and it will cache information about them over on the Windows side so that the IDE and the tool chain will know where to find all the parts that it needs. If you make any change on a Macintosh or iOS SDK side, you can always click Update Local File Cache and it'll go out and refetch what it needs. You can also use this Add button if you have some other libraries you've installed over on the Mac for iOS or for OS X, other frameworks, for example, third-party hardware devices and whatever, you can go and click and add other paths to other items that are over uh, in different directories. So we've got our OS X set up, and now let's go in and select iOS device. And it went out and queried and found that I've got an iPhone and iPad both running iOS 7.1, so it's seen that SDK already pre-installed and we'll click the OK button and it'll do the same process going out and grabbing where all the files are and caching that information. So now I'm set up to do iOS development. I can say File New, FireMonkey Mobile Application Delphi, and I can also add New, C++ Builder, FireMonkey Mobile Application, and we'll choose the blank for both of those. Now I've got two projects in a project group, one that's C++ and one that's Object Pascal. Let's put a, a button down on each of them. So we use ID inside to put a button. And nothing special here, just to do a quick test. Go to the object inspector and set the caption. 
and the event handler uh, equals 42. And the same thing for the C++ version. We'll go and set its caption to click me. And again, bring up the event handler for C++ and set it equal to 42. So now we've got our two applications. And we'll make sure that both our Delphi and C++ projects are targeting the iOS device, iPhone and iPad. See them here. So we'll click the Run button to compile and link and deploy the Object Pascal version of this simple one-button app, just to make sure that the configuration is set up properly for the connection and the deployment through the PA server on the Macintosh. You'll see over here in the Macintosh desktop that Project 1 has appeared. Here comes the splash screen, and then you'll see my one-button app, which, when I click on it, uh, changes the button caption to 42. So Delphi is working fine from the Windows ID to the Macintosh. Let's go back and make sure my C++ configuration also works. Set This time I'll, I'll compile it for uh, iPad. And over here on the iPad, we're getting the same uh, application, this time written in C++. So we can go and click on the button and get the event handler to fire. Let me just make sure that the OS X Support is also working, so we'll build a FireMonkey desktop application. And we'll just put a button down. And again, set the button. And we'll set this target platform this time to OS 10. And we'll activate that and hit run just to make sure that our OS 10 connectivity is working as well. Over in your Documents Embarkator Studio subdirectory for your user account, the SDKs folder will contain information about the SDKs that you added. That's how easy it is to configure your Windows-based IDE to do OS 10 and iOS development. Have fun building multi-device applications using Delphi and C++ Builder as part of Rad Studio XZ6.